Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and today I'd like to give a quick review of a demo application for Fast Tools. Fast Tools is Yokogawa's supervisory control and data acquisition system. It can be used to make everything from a simple operator interface hooked up to one machine on your plant floor, all the way to a very complex collaboration decision support center that can be attached to millions of points, external websites, databases, wireless systems, so as small as you want to as big as you want, featuring up to quad redundant uh, servers. So main point of going through this example here is just to give you an idea of what an operator interface could look like, as well as some of the capabilities that are expressed throughout the pages. So taking a look at the operator interface here, you can see its navigation looks very similar to a web browser. So going across the top here, I'm just going to kind of click on some of these to show you. So I can go to a current alarm list. You can see I can move the columns around. I can sort up, sort down. I can apply filters. I can do custom filters. Ands, ors. I can use wildcards. I can use second set here. Histor historical alarms system alarms. I can add extra tabs if I want. So that kind of gives you an idea of the alarm capabilities. I can go back to a home page here. If I know the address I'm looking for of a specific page, I could type it in here. I can also do kind of backwards, forwards. I can zoom in, zoom out, go to original size, fit everything to the screen. I can go ahead and click on this key up here, log in a different user. Based on the user, it can land on a specific screen. In this case, demo user lands on this particular screen. I can do stuff like trends. If we take a look down here, I can go and add a pen to the trend. It gives me all the points that are trendable. I can go ahead and change the color. There we go, there's a trend I can zoom in. I could do stuff like change the time scale, so that's last hour, I could say last day. So there we are. And once again I can kind of zoom as much as I want. Fit in window, I can go back to kind of the original. I can also, uh, I'm uh, right clicking here, but I can zoom in, fit in window, Render, I could kind of change how it's being viewed. Other things I could do is I could add additional pens, I could get rid of this legend, all types of stuff by right clicking and going trend properties. All types of little ways I can alter how this trend screen is showing up. Go back to the home page. I've got print up here as well. On the left are some navigation buttons that I can use to go to other screens. Down at the bottom is a real time alarm system. I can go and acknowledge stuff. I got scroll bars. I can see what page I'm on. I can see what user on what machine is logged in. I can see the time and date. So let's go and navigate through some screens to see some examples of what's going on. Here's a well site. Once again, we have a trend. I can have stuff like face plates with set points. Made a quick little change there, and so we'll see a little bump over here on the trend. I can get rid of the faceplate. I can kind of kind of zoom in a little more on what I'm looking at. You can see all the pens. See the cursor on the screen, and down here under hairline value, you can see exactly what it is for all my pens at that point. And then these little valves, numbers, uh, stuff like this. These are all kind of reusable graphics or objects that you can select from a library when you're doing the edit module for this. 
can have groups of those faceplates. I've also got some pre-built screens for various pieces of hardware, like for example, here's one for the Stardom RTU. You can see it's automatically bringing in stuff like the firmware version, how much of the CPU, what program is running in the CPU also, as well as some port statuses on the system. I've got similar for stuff like the uh, ProSafe RS uh, safety system there. In this case, I don't have the ProSafe actually hooked up, but if I did, I could bring in some of this information. I've also got stuff like KPIs. I've got various widgets for showing KPIs, stuff like gauges, bar graphs with uh, gradient fills, trends. I can, of course, do stuff like uh, tables, schedules, times, batch ins, batch outs. Various different graphs, tanks, fills, once again the KPIs. Let's take a look at some other examples here, power, geothermal. Here's just an example of some piping animation. Here's some more, including kind of these uh, meter displays. These are some other widgets that are available. Here's an example of another type of screen. This is just kind of turning on and off various layers. And layers are essentially kind of levels of screen, so I can then make them active or inactive, and that's kind of what those buttons are linked to there. So here's just an example of animation. So I can do a slider here. You can kind of see the dish here is tracking to it. Just examples of screens. Let's go back. Power. Do a quick one here. Here's a little more complex screen for biomass. You can see how we can have text entry for various food and pharma. This is just an example of animation here. So we can kind of see they're rotating, the bottle's going, valve opens, fills, moves on the next one. Go ahead and stop it. Same thing, here's a typical kind of mixing animation. So mixer's running. Lines are filling, valves are opening. Go ahead and stop. Pain. Let's see some other things that I have here. I can go water. I can go ahead and fit that to screen. I can zoom in on a section of it. See what's going on at that particular unit. Over here I can also have various buttons to quickly hop around between RTUs. Let's take a look at this others quickly here. Alarm management. I can email based on alarms. I can have alarm priorities. I can have alarm delays. I can do suppressions. I can have group suppressions. I can have alarm collections. This is kind of an interesting one. So I've got a process variable trending across here. I can go ahead and kind of click, and you'll see a little cursor show up wherever I click. So I can see on that trend exactly where that alarm happened. So that's kind of what we call alarm linking there. I've got full reporting system as well. So I can do something like uh, audit trail here. I can say I want to go hours. I can say the last two hours. I can go ahead and generate a report. And there it is. Those are all the people that logged in and logged out. I wasn't editing the system. If I had gone ahead and edited the system, all the edits and changes are there. So if you're kind of in the pharmaceutical area, we've got full support, support for 21 CFR Part 11. Audit trail type requirements. And once I set this hours and two, I can apply that to other reports, like, say, downtime. Okay, so there's kind of a little report on downtime. 
In fact, uh, under the uh, engineering module, you can do as complex reports as you want. Like literally, uh, your imagination is the limit. And uh, anything you couldn't do with our reporting engine, you could use uh, third-party tools like Excel or Crystal Reports to come up with any type of daily, monthly, weekly, any type of report you could dream of as well. Got another neat capability here called Playback. So I can go ahead and record what's going on on the screen, including mouse movements, where I click. And I can actually then do a playback on exactly what happened there. So maybe this is for training. Maybe it's for uh, just uh, operator education. Like say something happened out on a site and you wanted to know exactly what happened. If this recording was set and we set it to kind of record every day, and keep the most current dates worth of clicking and keyboard actions in uh, place, then you could always play it back to see exactly what happened during a certain event that happened during the day. So I can go ahead, open that up, go down here to the VCR controls. And we can kind of see how the mouse moved around, what it clicked on on the screen. So that's kind of the playback option. Under stardom here, let's take a look at something. This is kind of a neat little thing. See how this uh, sine wave's coming in? Well, this is coming off an actual stardom unit that we have hooked up to the demo. And I'm going to show you something kind of relatively unique. So when you combine the stardom uh, process automation controller or stardom RTU with fast tools, we get something called event buffering. And what this means is, is we won't lose any data if the PC goes down. We won't lose any data if the network connection goes down. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to simulate a network disconnection by actually going to the uh, controller and disconnecting the Ethernet cable. So we can see right now at the bottom my communication status went bad. And we can see on the trend that essentially these samples of data I was hoping to get, I'm no longer getting them. It's offline. Well, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the network to that controller. And what we should see after a few seconds is, is the communication status is going to go good. And then we'll actually see the trend get backfilled. So that's just an example of not losing any data, the buffering capability of our products when combined here. So in a couple seconds, we should see this trend get rebuilt. So we'll, we'll just have to wait. Okay, so I think any second now we should see our communication status here go green as it finds the stardom unit is back on the network. All right, so it now says the status is normal. Okay, and we can see the trend is getting rebuilt. So there it is. We didn't lose any data. All that data came back in. Here's an example of being able to go to a web page. So in this case, you can actually embed web pages within FastTool. So anything that you could kind of see out there on the internet or intranet. In this case, this is a stardom controller's maintenance page. So the stardom controller is actually serving up this page. And we've gone right into it. And see, here's additional pages coming off that guy. I can go back, see information. So it's nice to be able to embed web pages like that. So let's go back to the top. Let's take a look at a couple other things. Let's take a look at a graphical or geographical uh, information system integration. So let's go ahead, fit it to screen. And then what I can do is zoom in. And what we're seeing here is when we zoom in, we can really get additional layer information. So as I zoom in, more and more information becomes available to me. So this is just an example of layers with uh, the geographical information system integration. And uh, we can, of course, do this with uh, Google Maps. We could do it such that it supported your mouse scroll wheel, so you could just scroll in and out with your mouse. Right now, I just have a scroll left and right with my mouse, so it's not going to zoom in using the mouse wheel, but we could just as easily do that. Let me show you another uh, 
neat thing that can be done with Stardom. Uh, this is uh, advanced animations, so we can actually do path moves. So I'm going to set this to auto, and we can kind of see how this is being animated across a complete path. So we can do very complex automation of animation. And to wrap things up here, I'm going to show a final demonstration. So we call this having a drink on us, but we can kind of see here that we're going to start seeing a level fill on the bottle. It starts to pour. As soon as it hits that cutoff line, there we go. So you can actually do some pretty nice animations with this to help better visualize what's going on with your process. So this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa. Thanks for watching. And uh, have a great day.